This audiobook of the original America Burning was produced by the Firefighter Podcast Combustible. More details on this project can be found online at www.combustiblethepodcast.com. The audio for this recording is consistent with all copyright rights and permissions associated with America Burning and is not affiliated with or endorsed in any way by the federal government or the U.S. Fire Administration. What this report is about. The striking aspect of the nation's fire problem is the indifference with which Americans confront the subject. Destructive fire takes a huge toll in lives, injuries, and property losses, yet there is no need to accept those losses with resignation. There are many measures, often very simple precautions, that can be taken to reduce those losses significantly. The Commission worked in a field where statistics are meager, but its estimates of fire's annual toll are reliable. 12,000 American lives and more than $11 billion in wasted resources. Annual costs of fire rank between crime and product safety in magnitude. These statistics are impressive in their size, though perhaps not scary enough to jar the average American from his confidence that it will never happen to me. In a Washington hearing, the commission heard testimony from the parents of a boy who caught fire after playing with matches. They described the horror of the accident, the anxiety while awaiting doctors' reports, the long weeks of separation during the critical phases of treatment, the child's agony during painful treatment, the remaining scars, and the many operations that lie ahead. Multiply that experience by the 300,000 Americans who are injured by fire every year and consider, as we did, that it could easily happen in your own family. Then the nation's fire problem becomes very immediate and very fearsome. During its deliberations, the Commission uncovered many aspects of the nation's fire problem that have not received enough attention, often through indifference, often through lack of resources. It became clear that a deeper federal involvement was needed to help repair the omissions and help overcome the indifference of Americans to fire safety. We felt strongly that fire prevention and control should remain primarily local responsibilities. Local governments, through codes and fire safety laws and through heavy investments in fire department personnel and equipment, have shouldered the major burden of protecting citizens from fire and should continue to do so. Those governments appreciate special local conditions and needs more fully than an arm of the federal government would be able to do. Roles for the federal government, in the Commission's view, are appropriately limited to lending technical and educational assistance to state and local governments, collecting and analyzing fire information, regulating the flammability of materials, conducting research and development in certain areas, and providing financial assistance when adequate fire protection lies beyond a community's means. To the extent these functions are being performed at all, they are scattered among the federal agencies. The Commission feels there should be an entity in the federal government where the nation's fire problem is viewed in its entirety, and which encourages attention to aspects of the problem that have been neglected. This same entity would serve as the conduit for the intergovernmental cooperation that is needed to combat the nation's fire problem. Accordingly, the Commission recommends the establishment of a United States Fire Administration in the Department of Housing and Urban Development, where the primary federal responsibility exists with local government. The U.S. Fire Administration would not swallow all the ongoing programs of research and action, but would supplement them for the sake of a more coherent effort to reduce the nation's fire losses. In this way, the special abilities of each federal agency would be utilized. The following summarizes briefly some of the aspects of the nation's fire problem which the Commission studied and which the U.S. Fire Administration, through encouragement or direct sponsorship, could help to solve. There needs to be more emphasis on fire prevention. Fire departments, many of which confine their roles to putting out fires and rescuing its victims, need to expend more effort to educate children on fire safety to educate adults through residential inspections, to enforce fire prevention codes, and to see that fire safety is designed into buildings. Such efforts need to be continuously evaluated so that the nation can learn what kinds of measures are most effective in reducing the incidence and destructiveness of fire. The fire services need better training and education. Training for firefighters and officers ranges from excellent, as in some large cities, to almost non-existent, as in many rural areas. Better training would improve the effectiveness of fire departments and reduce firefighter injuries. Better education provides the key to developing leadership for fire prevention. Americans must be educated about fire safety. Most destructive fires are caused by the careless actions of people, 
largely through lack of concern and ignorance of hazards. Many fires caused by faulty equipment rather than carelessness could be prevented if people were trained to spot the faults before it's too late. And many injuries and deaths could be prevented if people knew how to react to a fire, whatever its cause. In both design and materials, the environment in which Americans live and work presents unnecessary hazards. The hazards of flames have been studied and regulated to some extent, but recognition of the hazards of smoke and toxic gases has come belatedly. Ironically, efforts to make materials fire retardant may have increased the life hazard, since the incomplete combustion of these materials often results in heavy smoke and toxic gases. While materials and products that present unreasonable hazards should be banned, the Commission believes the major emphasis should be on a labeling system to be developed by the Consumer Product Safety Commission for materials and products, so that consumers at the time of purchase know what risks are involved. The impact of new materials, systems, and buildings on users and the community should be assessed during design stages well before use. Careful analysis and filing of a fire safety effectiveness statement should permit recognition of faults before tragedy strikes. The fire protection features of buildings need to be improved. There is a need for automatic fire extinguishing systems in every high-rise building and every low-rise building in which many people congregate. Economic incentives for built-in protection are not available today and should be provided. Many communities are without adequate building and fire prevention codes, and many nursing homes and other facilities for handicapped citizens are without adequate fire protection. Perhaps most important, Americans need to be encouraged to install early warning fire detectors in their homes, where most fire deaths occur. Important areas of research are being neglected. The state of the art in firefighting, in treatment of burn and smoke victims, in protecting the built environment from combustion hazards, points to the need for a major expansion of research and development in these areas. Progress in most of these areas is hindered by a lack of fundamental understanding of the behavior of fire and its combustion products. To encourage solutions to these problems, the Commission has made recommendations in this report to a number of bodies. The American public, the President, Congress, state and local governments, industries, professional organizations, and agencies of the federal government. It has also outlined important tasks for the proposed U.S. Fire Administration. To develop a comprehensive national fire data system, which will help establish priorities for research and action. To monitor fire research in both the governmental and private sectors, to assist the interchange of information, and to encourage research in areas that have been neglected. To provide block grants to states, so that local governments may develop comprehensive fire protection plans, improve firefighting equipment, and upgrade education of fire service personnel. To establish a National Fire Academy, for the advanced education of fire service officers, and for assistance to state and local training programs to undertake a major effort to educate Americans in fire safety. The Commission has also recommended the reinforcement of programs in other areas, including detection and alarm systems for federally assisted and insured housing and built-in protection loan insurance within the Department of Housing and Urban Development, extension of burn treatment facilities within the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, burn and smoke research within the National Institutes of Health, rural fire protection, within the Department of Agriculture, and further research in the engineering-based technology programs of the National Bureau of Standards. If these efforts are carried out, we predict a 5% reduction in fire losses annually until the nation's losses have been halved in about 14 years. A 5% reduction in resource losses alone would amount to $350 million in the very first full year, which is considerably more than the annual costs of the projected federal involvement of $153 million annually, as discussed in Chapter 19. The public members of the Fire Commission represent the nation's firefighters, insurers, fire equipment manufacturers, testing laboratories, and other groups in the private sector concerned with reducing the nation's fire losses. We reached the conclusion that there must be a significant federal effort, only after careful consideration of the shortcomings of present efforts to reduce fire losses in the United States. Many of the commissioners have devoted their careers to improving the nation's fire record. We have become accustomed to public indifference to the fire problem. But we hold the hope that this attitude can be changed. It is our wish that this report will provide a turning point 
by reaching, if only indirectly, the conscience of millions of Americans.